Good evening, and, and welcome, welcome to Rutland Weekend Television. Television. We, we are, are the Ricochet Brothers, Tony and Nigel Ricochet. That's spelled ricochet, ricochet, but pronounced ricochet. And we are your hosts for tonight. It was a toss-up between us who got the job of announcing tonight's entertainment, and due to an administrative cock-up, we both got the job. So without any more ado, let's get right on with the first programme, The Rutland Play. <coughs> Morning, sir. Morning. Oh, dear. Had a few too many of the old ill health fruit juices, I'm afraid, sir. Came in this morning, said she had a hangover, so I gave her a nice cup of warm fat with bits of liver in, and she's never looked back. Can I get you something? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't think so. <coughs> well, you'll be doing yourself a favour, sir. This is the worst ill health food store in the world. People get sick as a dog in here. <coughs> More cold herring in vinegar, sir. <coughs> of course, the reason is, sir, we use a little used engine oil in everything. <coughs> Tastes as bad, but it's much worse for you. I see. <coughs> Can I tempt you to try today's special, the Diarrhea Delight? Uh, no, thank you. Ah, what a pity. It's been extremely popular. They've been pulling them out of here every five minutes. Well, I'm not exactly hungry. That's all right, sir. It's not exactly food. Mm. I think I'll pass. You will if you taste it. Well, if you're not going to eat, you might as well stock up whilst you're here. Stock up? <laughs> yes, the only place that sells fresh gob by the tub. <laughs> Why not try our wheat germ, sir? Why should I? Famous, sir. we got wheat germ with all sorts of germs in, sir. Mumps, berry-berry, chicken pox, gout... If you've got friends who are ill health food freaks, sir, you can't do better, sir, than give them a nice rancid milk chicken box germ sandwich, just add a touch or two of condemned veal, and sprinkle on a gob or two of guitar. Wonderful. Can hospitalise a grown man in five minutes. <coughs> well, it's a stomach pump. Stomach pump, certainly, sir. Of course, we've got a vegetarian camera as well. Oh, really? Yes, you can buy a vegetarian, take them home and force feed them meat. Well, isn't that rather cruel? Wonderfully, sir. Strength through weakness. Well, look here, I think I'll just take a tin of sickness spread, please. Sickness spread, sir, certainly. What sort would you like? We've got uh, gout, fat legs, scurvy, the staggers, trench foot, acne, sheep rot, mange, rickets. Tin of acne, please. Tin of acne, sir, certainly. Couldn't do worse. Makes a wonderful present, highly contagious, 30p. Thanks a lot. You sure I can't tempt you to a glass of Spanish tummy before you go? Oh! Oh, oh well, be ill, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hope you enjoyed the play. Oh, oh incidentally, this, this is Reginald. He is, in fact, another of the Ricochet brothers. Pronounced Ricochet, but spelt Ricochet. And he too has been booked as a guest announcer due to another administrative mess up. And so, we would all of us like to hope that you enjoy this lovely number from the ever fresh quill of Mr. Neil Innes. Hi there. Here we are at the discotheque. Everybody's looking great and smelling pretty good too. Okay. Here's a brand new dance. I'll tell you how it's done. It's a little unusual and not much fun. It's not like the bump, it's not like the hustle, and it'll never, never, never be filmed by Ken Russell. It's a hard to get, hard to get, everybody's doing the hard to get, hard to get, hard to get, everybody's doing the hard to get. It's easy to do, you soon get the knack, you just shrug your shoulders and turn your back and do the hard to get, hard to get. Everybody's doing the hard to get, hard to get, hard to get. Everybody's doing the hard to get. It's easy to do, you soon get the knack. You just shrug your shoulders and turn your back. Do the hard to get, hard to get. Everybody's doing the hard to get, hard to get, hard to get. Everybody's doing the hard to get. to get everybody's doing the hard to get hard to get hard to get everybody's doing the hard to get hard to get 
hard to get. Everybody's doing the hard to get, hard to get, hard to get. Everybody's doing the hard to get. Well, everybody is doing. Thank you very much. Most sincerely. Well, one thing that's not hard to get is obviously the Ricochet Brothers. Spelled ricochet, but pronounced ricochet. Because here is Jerry Ricochet, spelled Tom, but pronounced Jerry, who has also been booked onto this channel to do the announcing due to the same administrative fiasco that brought the rest of us here. But not to worry. We all of us hope that you are having a very sincerely, truly wonderful evening's viewing on Rutland Weekend Television and hope that you enjoy the next programme, which comes from Scunthorpe Television. No, Mildred, love is a semantic confusion. Oh, I agree. Based on the accidental usage of the same word, viz. love, in two totally different and often quite contradictory meanings. It est, I love you. I love you, too. And to make love. Do you think we ought? So that if we used a different word, e.g. Uh, sprimpo for the activity, for example, to make sprimpo, we should avoid the romantic semantic confusion. Shall we make sprimpo? Precisely. No confusion there with a the romantic emotion, love. Come on, let's go and make sprimpo. Exactly. I really need some sprimpo in. Yes, you can use this word in any way you want, you see. Will you come upstairs for sprimpo or not? Precisely. You can use it as an adjective in for sprimpo or as an adverb in sprimpoing. Oh, George, why do we never make sprimpo anymore? Precisely. In the sentence, oh, George, why do we never make sprimpo anymore, there is no ambiguity. Well, I'm going to find a new sprimpoer. Aha! A new usage of the word. A sprimpoer. A person who commits sprimpo. Settle down in a nice little sprimpo nest. Even better, a sprimpo. Sprimpo nest, where the activity of Sprimpo may be indulged in by the Sprimpoer. Goodbye. Bye bye. Sprimpo, ooh la la. Sprimpo, ooh la la. Sprimpo, ooh la la. Sprimpo, ooh la la. Sprimpo. Yes, can I help you? Yes. I'm a little bit confused. Oh, yes? What seems to be the trouble? Well, everything keeps changing. My hat, my clothes, and, and so on. Oh, yes, madam. I'm afraid this part suffers from bad continuity. What? You'll get used to it. Oh. Could you tell me the way to Dr. Schlesinger's, please? Certainly. I'll walk straight down the street to the end. Yes. Take your first turning on the right. Yes. Go along for about a hundred yards. Yes. Turn left and you can't miss it. Thank you very much. Not at all. Good morning. Walk down this street to the end. Take the first turning on the right. Go along for about a hundred yards. Turn left and you can't miss it. Sit 
on, Mildred. Now, how did you know that was me? I've just been having a look at some of your rushes. Now, Mildred, you've got what we film doctors call bad continuity. Oh, dear. How did that happen? Well, I'm afraid you caught it, probably watching too many bad films. Oh, dear. Now, I'm going to try to edit out the next two weeks and see how you feel then. How do you feel now? A bit hungry. Uh, but the continuity is better. Oh, yes. Any, any further problems? Well, I've still got bad sound. What do you mean, your violins go all... Oh, that's it, yes. Anything else? Well, I do suffer rather a lot from flashbacks. I mean, everything ripples and I go into the past. I see. When did all this start? Well, it all started a few years ago in Brighton, when I was on the beach with my husband, George. Mildred, what are you doing here? It's a flashback. But you're supposed to be with Dr Schlesinger. Yes, I know, but I was just telling him about when I was here at Brighton with you. Well, there we were on the beach together. Oh, listen, that's my voiceover. But this is years ago. Yes, do you remember? I certainly do. Now, I was sitting here talking about the concept of time. That's right. We've been arguing about Gilbert Ryle. Yes, and I was saying that reminds me of the time when I was in college at Rutland University. Well, I couldn't have been more than 20. And I was very much in love with Jim. A handsome philosophy student. Oh, Jim, I'm so happy. I'm happy that you're happy, Mildred. I haven't been so happy since I was a little girl. Were well, you a happy little girl? Oh, yes, very. I remember once, I couldn't have been more than ten, and we had this beautiful house, and I was sitting on my rocking horse, and my mummy came up to me. Lost in thought again, Mildred. What are you thinking about? Oh, Mummy, Mummy, I was just remembering what it was like to be a baby. Really, dear? Yes, I remember having a bottle. Nanny Blenkinsop was on duty at the time. Nice. Isn't that a lovely baby? Oh, it's such a sweet baby. Quickly, Doctor, my wife is trapped by flashbacks. Here she is, quick after. This is where she rippled, Doctor. Quickly, man, there's no time to be lost. Well, nurse is gone, I'm afraid. Have you seen Mildred? I do hope you're in time. Ah, oh, at last. There you are, Mildred. No, no, I'm afraid you're too early. Too late, you mean? No, no, too early, you see. We're still waiting for little Mildred or little Jack. You know, darling, I was just thinking about our honeymoon. The time we conceived this little child. No, no. We've gone to Italy for a month. For heaven's sake, warm we'll all be spring done evening. for. Too late. It just shows how dangerous bad films can be. A new season of classically bad American films starts next week on Rutland Weekend Television with the classic widescreen romance Fiddle Dee Dee. Set in the deep south of Hollywood, it tells the classic story of love without touching. Why, Mr. Bennett, I never expected y'all to say such a thing. Miss Bell, would you take it amiss if I told you something? Why, no, Mr. Bennett. Why, Miss Bell, the thing is, I'm mighty fond of you. Why, I'm mighty fond of you too, Mr. Bennett. And I was just wondering if you'd care to be... What? If you'd care to be... Well, you can see more of that, hopefully, on the widescreen classic. And you can find out whether she would care to be or not to be, that is the question. And it's also the question posed in Peter Hall's Hamlet, which tells the story of a tiny village at great length. Great length is a hamlet in Suffolk, where the villagers are continually being filmed and it tells the sad story of the breakup of the community upon the collapse of the British film industry. Returning to the series of classically bad American films, Week 47 has a classically bad American musical.
From the pen of the man who once wrote some pieces for the Reader's Digest came the explosive book, An American in Leamington. Now from the book comes the major motion picture, 24 Hours in Tunbridge Wells. The tale of three typical singing and dancing, laughing and clowning American sailors who have 24 hours liberty in one of the most exciting towns in Kent, Tunbridge Wells. The most exciting place in the world for sailors. We're the most exciting wicked naughty gals. More exciting than a book of Norman Mailers. That's Tom Rich Wells. We're on our way to Tom Rich Wells. Tom Rich Wells passes many spells. We spend all day in Tom Rich Wells. And smell all the Tom Rich Wells. Women are women and the men are rougher and tougher than the worst of hell. Then a Tunbridge, Tunbridge, Tunbridge Welsh. to Cheltenham with all of the swells but the place we dig the most in the world is Tom Ridge see how they managed to spend half-day closing in Tunbridge Wells in the season of classically bad American films. We would like to apologise for the overmanning on this programme, which is due to an administrative error in the bookings department. Those responsible have now been paid. Oh, incidentally, perhaps we ought to mention that this is Sally, one of the Ricochet brothers' sisters, but we're not quite sure whose. Well, well, this is our final announcement tonight, so on behalf of all we Ricochet brothers and sisters, spelt ricochet but pronounced ricochet, may we wish you all a jolly good one as we leave you with the last programme on Rutland Weekend for tonight. Expose. Expose. Hello. A new problem is stalking the home counties. A new terror for the residents of housing estates, apart from the Surrey Puma, the Berkshire Burr Constrictor and the Middlesex rate demands. Lately there have been persistent rumours of groups of men roaming the countryside in dirty Macintoshes. Expose tonight examines the problem of the massed flashers of Rygate. Well, you can usually see them when the moon is full. There's usually about 30 or 40 of them, and they all come up in a big line and go, whoosh. Have you ever seen them? Not yet, but I'm still looking. The masked flashers, are they a myth like the Yeti, or do they exist like Sir Keith Joseph? Definitely exist. Sir Keith Joseph definitely exists. Shut up. Oh, they definitely exist. The flashers? Yes, you get them round here amusing the children and frightening the horses. Mind you, I don't believe in Sir Keith Joseph. Shut up. We have several eyewitness sketches of what people have seen of the mass flashes. Can we see them? Oh, no, it's too rude to be seen on television. Of course, if you'd like to come to a party with some of the lads. Shh. Shh. PC Norbert Hopkins is just one. I'm just 30. No, I meant you're just one of several policemen. Oh, yes, yes. oh, I see, yes, yes, just, uh, just one of several, yes. Uh, Frankly, I don't believe in Sir Keith Joseph either. Shut up. 
Altogether, there are just 40. Just 30? Shut up. Sorry. About 40 officers are engaged in the search for the massed flashers. Ten more than are out looking for Sir Keith Joseph. We asked Commander Ashford of N Division, the famous Naughty Division, what the police have been doing so far. Well, we have over the past year been extremely busy, uh, dragging ponds, repairing fences, doing bits of crazy paving, cutting the lawn and that. Do you think this will lead anywhere? Well, yes, we're hoping to expand the business and eventually get out of the police force. Why is this? Well, the uniform's a bit rough. Then again, the language is sometimes a bit on the strong side, and I don't like the violence. The violence? Yeah, you know, having to hit people and make them talk. It really turns me off. Perhaps N Division's methods are a little unusual, but they're certainly popular in the district. Yes, they decorated all the living room for me and uh, laid the bedroom carpet. They built this nice garage for me. Uh, well, they done me crazy paving and um, put in me roses and then they put in me garden gnomes. Unusual, aren't they? At the moment, they're working on a new hotel. This is the first hotel built entirely by the police force, although they have already built three motels, a cafeteria and the Rutland slipper baths. Do you think the police ought to involve themselves in this sort of work? Look, there's been no thieving on this site since they started. That's a zero crime rate, better than anywhere else in the country. But 14 shops in the area have been robbed in broad daylight. Well, they should get the police to work for them. The police are, in fact, working as shop assistants in more than seven shops in the district. And their new role has already made a startling difference to high street crime. Uh, we have found that since employing the police as counter girls, we have virtually stamped out shoplifting. This is the headquarters of N Division, a bustling Victorian house near Rygate. Here they grow vegetables, do all their own baking, most of their own washing, nearly all of their own plumbing, half of their own knitting and about 76% of their own shopping. In fact, they're virtually self-supporting. Frank, life seems pretty idyllic here. Yes, it is, but sometimes it's a bit of a hassle, you know. In what way? Well, like, we have a bit of trouble with the hippies. Really? Yes, they come and search the house, looking for drugs, you know, but we never have any. You don't need anything else to get high when you're wearing the uniform. But I thought it was a bit rough. Yeah, that's what I mean. One serious attempt was made to evict the police while we were there, when a group of squatters tried to get them out. Despite not making a few arrests, the police won this round and successfully defended their station, as they call it. Do you think you're helping to reduce crime at all? We hope by our lifestyle to attract the admiration of the criminal who will join us in the police force. A bold attempt by the men and women of N Division to alter the face of crime detection. But still, alas, no sign of the massed flashes of Rygate. This is... Reginald Tompkins, expose Rygate. The mass flashers. Well, existing or not, this is what the problem looks like to many people. Sir Keith Joseph, does he exist or not? To discuss the problem, we have with us in the studio four economists, two politicians, my brother-in-law, my auntie, a small packet of fairy snow, a little wheelbarrow, a large rock cod, a piece of... Yes? Bad news, I'm afraid. My wife, she's still with me. No, she's still with me. Oh, I am sorry. Uh, don't worry, it's worse than that. You're getting a bad notice. What? Wally Burr, the television critic, is giving you a bad notice. What's he say? Well, he says he's still watching the programme, but it's bad. Not if this is comedy, I'm a Dutchman's uncle. No, it's worse than that. What? You don't mean dire stuff indeed? I'm afraid so. Well, that's typical, isn't it? You flog your guts out for a quarter of the money you can get on ITV and some spotty little cretin who gets paid for watching television makes smart-ass remarks in his cheapskate, egocentric little column. They come creeping up to you at parties and receptions looking for free funny lines they can stick in their nasty newspapers and trying to get your autograph for their pallid little offspring. And next thing you know, they're staying up all night trying to squeeze witticisms like blackheads out of their second-rate minds at your expense. 
and those female bitch writers with brains in their bums blinking at the box night after night. They're worse than the Wally Burrs of this world. At least he doesn't pretend to be intelligent, which is just as well, as he's stupid, downright stupid. All critics are stupid. It's a stupid, bloody job. And I hate their stupid, mean, stupid, petty, stupid, cheat speak, stupid, hack, journalistic minds. Well done. What? Wally Burr has just said you were magnificent. What? Yes, he's given you a rave. Really? Yes, he said the tirade against the critics in particular was a masterly use of satirical invective. He said that? Yes. Well, you, you know, he's not stupid all the time. You know, obviously, if he's picking up things like this, he's pretty perceptive. Yes. yes. You know, not, not, not all critics are rubbish by any means. Letitia Hunt's just given you a great notice. Really? Yes. Well, I, I've always thought she was pretty good, actually. I, I've always read her, anyway. Yes. Look, yes. Um, perhaps I, I want to say a word of apology. Maybe I, I did rather overreact there, you know, to criticism. Obviously, there are good and bad critics. Well, they're not necessarily bad critics, you know. Most critics have to be pretty competent, so indeed very intelligent, you know. So please don't uh, take amiss what I said just then and if you are thinking of doing a write-up i thank you very much for watching the program and we shall be most interested to to know oh, what you have to say about shut it shut up you creep i thought you were someone to respect now look at you i'm so sorry huh. how do you think i feel what do you think it's like being the little guy week after week i want to be the tall guy next week tall and goyish you think i like being the only intellectual on this program you think it pays any better <laughs> goddamn kids Oh, they went behind their degrees, writing my lines for me. You think that doesn't hurt? I have to suffer in silence. I'm a writer. I've had plays on. Silence. Silence most of the time with the number of lines he gives me. Well, it's no fun hanging around waiting to do the musical numbers, you know. Look, come on, chaps. Oh, I've shut got up. hundreds of numbers I could be doing. Now, Neil, shut please. Up. Here, 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 listen. Why don't we put in for our own programme? Like idea. Idea. Henry's a writer, you could do the you music. I used to be an actor can once. I be in it as well? Oh, yes. you think? I gave you your first big break. Come on, we're going to see Aubrey Singer. He's desperate for a break. Yeah, it's too much like...